Okay, we're still June 11, page 13. We're now doing uh, questions 70 through 73. 70 and 71. And what they're doing here is they're giving you two numbers, and it's going to be worth two points. So essentially on some kind of a grading sheet somewhere, there's a point per number depending on the work you have to do. But this ultimately means you have to show your work. And uh, as I've always been teaching, uh, you list your knowns. Just found out there's some discussion. There's some teachers that don't really require that. But uh, it's a really good way to start any problem. You get lost in the wilderness. The first thing you do is you dump out all the stuff you find and, and list everything you've got. So let's go ahead and do this problem. A vertical spring has a spring constant of 150 newtons per meter. Spring constant. What variable is spring constant again? Oh, man. How do I remember that stuff? Well, yeah, it's probably going to be in my formula sheet. Sounds mechanical, so I go to my mechanics section, and I go over here and I find spring constant, and the force on a spring, spring constant. Okay, that's K. All right, so that's K. So in my equation, spring constant is going to be K. So I know my uh, spring constant, K, is equal to 150 newtons per meter. So now we're told that a mass of uh, 2 kilograms is suspended from a string allowed to come to rest. Okay, so you got the spring. I keep getting texts. It's irritating, isn't it? Now you know what it's like when that thing happens in class. All right, for 70 and 71, we're told... Uh, Calculate the elongation of the spring produced by the suspended 2 kilogram mass. Show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. All right, well, uh, first thing is here, we want to know elongation. What variable was elongation again? Let's see. Uh, okay, here, it's x. It says right here, change in spring length from the equilibrium position. So that's x, and we're going to call that elongation. So we're looking for x. So let's go find this formula that's got us some f. K, I'm sorry, I got us some K, X, and M. Well, I've got this one right here. It says the force in a spring is equal to K, X. But what, oh, wait a minute. I've got M, and gravity's pulling it down, so that's going to be G. So I always know G. So my force is actually going to be weight, which is um, the force of gravity is right here. Force of uh, force of gravity, uh, acceleration of gravity is force divided by mass. So force of gravity is equal to gm. Force of gravity is weight. So weight equals mg. So that's our force. So we can write the equation. F is equal to kx. I know F. That's going to be mg. I know k, and I'm looking for x. So I have to do algebra. So divide both sides by k. So I've got uh, x is equal to f divided by k. So it's my formula. Uh, and now I want to show substitution with units. My force is going to be 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's my force, mg. And divide that by k. 150 newtons per meter. Kilogram meters per second squared will turn into newtons, so all those units will cancel out. So I've got about 20 divided by uh, 150. And so I get my answer. X is equal to 0.13 meters. 13 centimeters, this thing's going to stretch. Let's go to 72 and 73. Calculate the total elastic potential energy stored in the spring due to the suspended mass. Show all your work, including the equation substitution with units. Now it's elastic potential energy. That elastic potential energy is going to be uh, another formula, I bet. Here we go. Potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared. Okay. Now I have to use the x in my previous equation for my subsequent one, which in college is how m all of your equations are, all of your physics problems are going to build. You start here, you go to there, from here you can go to there, from here you can go to there, uh, which is why it's so important to list your notes. Uh, 
and here's the beauty, if we made a mistake on X and we showed all our work, uh, even if we use it incorrectly on the second problem, we can still get both points. So we just have to be careful. So the formula for the second part is going to be um, potential energy in a spring is one half kx squared. Let's go ahead and list our knowns. And um, we're going to do it again. I'm going to give us a point for it, so let's just make sure we do it. Uh, 150 newtons per meter. Mass was 2 kilograms. Accelerated gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. We calculate the spring constant the distance it stretches to 0.13 meters. Uh, that's everything. Okay, potential energy is 1 half kx squared. Um, oh, okay. So we've got potential energy is equal to 1 half of 150 newtons per meter. Uh, times 0.13 meters squared. So uh, that looks like we've got everything plugged in properly. So we get out our calculator. We do the squaring first. So, uh, and you know, interestingly enough, I've got this number still on my calculator screen. So I'm just going to square that number. Now I know it goes out to insane number of decimals, and I would never write all those. But as long as I got them in the calculator, I might as well just go ahead and square that button and square it. Okay. And now times it by 150. And now take half of it. Divided by 2. And I've got uh, 1.28. My potential energy is 1.28. And I know the units have to be joules, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a joules there. But um, let's go up and check our units here. We've got uh, meters squared, so uh, and then divided by meters. So we're going to lose one of our meters. So we'll have newton meters and a newton meter, and it's in fact a joule. So that kind of tells you my algebra is right. So here's the correct answer.